The next application we'll take a look at involves what we call postfix expressions. Before we talk about postfix expressions, we're going to start by looking at a simple problem. Let's say you have a calculator. Don't worry about what type it is right now. It will matter later on, but let's just say you have some calculator. And let's say we're buying some items and we want to compute the cost of buying those items. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to get the total cost of all the items. And then we should factor in the tax. And let's assume that's a 6% tax. So we would multiply the, the total cost by 1.06. And that would give us the total cost, including the tax. Let's suppose we buy three items. And let's say the cost of these items are $4.99, $5.99, and $6.99. So on our calculator, the way we would normally enter it is something along the lines of this. So we would enter 4.99 plus 5.99 plus 6.99 times 1.06 then equals. That's how we would normally compute this, right? Well, on some calculators, we would get the correct answer, which is $19.05. On other calculators that compute the scientific answer, it's actually going to be an incorrect answer. It's going to give us $18.39. So we see here, depending on the type of calculator we use, we may get the correct answer. We may not get the correct answer. And the reason why is the way this is being entered, well, on scientific calculators, it's going to do the proper order of operations. So it would multiply the 1.06 with just the 6.99 instead of the total of the three different items. Let's take this one step further. Uh, let's say some of the items we buy are taxable and some of them are not. So maybe our sequence of entering the numbers in a calculator is now something like this. So it'll be 499 times 1.06 and then we'll add the 599, maybe that one is not taxable. And then we'll add uh, 699 and then multiply that by 1.06 and then hit the equal sign. Well, if we use a scientific calculator, this will give us the correct answer. It should be $18.69 because it would multiply the 1.06 for the 4.99 and 6.99 items, and then we would add the 5.99 items. So that should work. But if we use a basic calculator that gives us the, the grand result as we do each computation, we're going to get the wrong answer. It would give us $19.37. And this is because with scientific calculators, it comes up with the parentheses, but basic calculators only store the current result. Here's a typical way that we can evaluate this sequence to get the correct result. So what we would want to do in that last example is we would want to take the 499 and the 106 and multiply them together. And let's suppose we can store that in a variable. Let's say A1 is the result of that. We would then want to add 599 with a1 and maybe we'll put that result back into a1 because we don't need the old value of a1 anymore and then we would want to multiply the 699 and the 106 and let's store that in a separate variable we'll call that a2 and then finally we would just add a1 and a2 and store that result in well, let's say a1 so we can actually uh, rewrite this sequence of operations something like this where we would do enter 499 and then 106 and multiply that together. And so that's going to give us some result. And then we have the 599 and then the plus means we would add all that together. That gives us some result. We would have the 699, the 106, multiply that together, give us a result. So what we have at this point is this part right here gives us one result. And then this part right here gives us the other results. So the first one gives us a one, the second one gives us a two, and then we add that all together to give us the final result. This format or this notation is what we call postfix notation. The reason why it's called postfix notation is the operator follows the two operands. So normally we're used to having an operand, an operator, and then an operand. But now the format is we have both operands and then the operator comes afterwards. Let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, let's say we have something like this, where if we're trying to do A plus B, that's our normal notation that we're used to. The postfix notation of that would be A, B, and then plus. Let's do another example. Uh, let's say we're doing two times two. That's our normal notation. If we use postfix notation, we would have two, two, 
and then the multiplication symbol. We'll do a couple more examples of taking a look at an expression in our standard notation and see how we would convert it to the postfix notation. So here's a, our first example where we would have a plus b minus c. So what we would do here is, well, if we were to evaluate the standard form, we would do a plus b first, take that result and subtract it by c. So in our postfix notation, we would have a b plus first. So we evaluate the a plus b part. And then to do the minus C, we would tack on the C because the AB plus gives us some result. And then that result with the C would be the two operands of the next expression or the next calculation. And then the minus sign would come afterwards to say that we're going to subtract the two values. If we wanted to do A times B divided by C, we would do A times B first. So in our postfix notation, we would have A, B, and then the time symbol. And then to divide by C, we would tack on the C at the end and then the divide symbol because we're going to take the result of A times B and then divide it by C. Now let's say we have something like A plus B times C. We're actually going to do the B times C part first and then we're going to add A to it. But the way we're going to do this is we read the expression from left to right. So we're going to add the symbols as we go. So we're going to have the A, B, and C together, and no symbols between them just yet. We put the multiplication symbol after the C, and what this tells us is we're going to compute B times C first. So that means that we would have A and then some result, and then we tack on the plus afterwards to take the result of B times C and then add A to it. So that's why we get A, B, C times, and then plus. Now let's say we have a times b plus c. In this case, we're going to multiply a and b first, take that result and add c to it. So this really isn't too different from our first example. So we would have a b times, because we're going to evaluate that part first, that's going to give us some result, and then we add the c plus, which means that we're going to take the result of a times b and add c to that result. Now let's throw in parentheses, and that adds a whole new level of complexity with this. So here, we're going to add B and C first, then we're going to take that result and multiply it by A. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have A, B, and C, kind of like we did a couple of examples ago, except the next symbol is the plus sign. So this means we're going to take B and C and add them together, and then we'll tack on the multiplication symbol afterwards. So then we would take A and multiply it by the result of B uh, plus C. I might be thinking, couldn't we just do something like BC plus A times? Technically, that gives you the same result, but one of the things that we're going to find with this notation is we keep the order of the operands the same. So notice that with all these examples so far, we have A first, then B, then C. So the operands are going to be in the same order, whether it's the standard notation or the postfix notation. It's just we have to be uh, creative and careful with where we place the different operators within that sequence of the operands. We'll next take a look at a times b plus the quantity of c times d. So that means we're going to do a times b first and then c times d, take the two results and add them together. So the postfix notation for that is going to be a b times, so we're going to evaluate that part first, and then we have the c times d, and then we're going to evaluate that part. And then finally, we're going to take those two results and then add them together. Now let's do something similar, except now we have the parentheses. So here we have to add A and B first, and then we're going to subtract C and D together, take those results and multiply them together. So for our postfix notation, we'll handle the A plus B part first, so that's going to be AB plus. And then after that, we need to subtract C and D, so we do CD minus. So then that gives us the two results so then we would need to multiply them together, so we would tack on the multiplication symbol at the end. We'll now throw in parentheses within parentheses. If we get a couple more, we got parentheses going on over here. Uh, we're going to do A plus B first. We're going to take that result, multiply it by C, and then take that result and subtract it by D. So how we're going to do this is we'll handle the A plus B part first. So we'd have AB plus, and that's going to give us some result. So to multiply it by C, we would tack on a C and then the times or multiplication symbol. And that's going to give us some result. So then to subtract that by D, 
we would include the D and then the minus at the end of our notation. Let's do one more example. So we have A plus B times, then in parentheses, C minus D divided by, then in parentheses, E plus F. Well, we still gotta keep the order of the operand, so we have A, B, C, D, E, F, but take a look at the order that everything's gonna be evaluated. We first have to actually evaluate E plus F. So we would have in our postfix notation, A, a B, C, D, E, F, and then the plus. So that will evaluate the E plus F and give us some result. We take that result and we divide it from D because we can't do C minus D divided by something until we do D divided by something because division comes before subtraction. So then we would have the divide symbol after the plus sign. Then we have to deal with the parentheses. So then we would have C minus that result. So then that's why we have the minus sign after the division symbol. We then have to do B times whatever that result is. So that's where we get the multiplication symbol to be next. And then finally we can add it to A. So then we would end this with a plus symbol.